Welcome back. In this video, you'll understand how to configure collection of value types using set and also using list in both XML as well as annotation configuration. Let us get started. So to tell an example, I have a class called as account, which is having set of string. String is a class, of course, just like account class string is a class. But string, does it have its own table? No, right? String will always go into some other table, is it? So string does not have its own table. So it's an entity type. And I'm having collection of entity types. How to map this set? Corresponding to java.util.set, is there any database column type? Mm, we can store this set using blob, binary large object, or club character large object but that's not an efficient way then how to map this column so whenever you have collection of value types whenever you have a collection basically for storing these values inside collection we need to have a separate collection table so let me tell you so i have account table corresponding to account class I have account table which has uh, account number as primary key and for storing the values inside a collection we should have a separate collection table uh, in this case I'll, I'll call the collection table as account underscore emails this table should have account number as foreign key. The primary key here becomes foreign key and it should contain the values email. So this table is this a table for emails storing emails. No, it is a table for storing collection of emails. So that's why we call it as collection table. So suppose for an account with ID one. If there are three emails, what happens? One, one, one comes here and different values for emails will come here. So remember, for storing any collection, we require a separate collection table where the collection table will have the foreign key, right? So let me show you how to map this set of strings in the XML first. Okay, I have my XML, okay, I'll just go to the start project okay so here i have my class map to account table is account and now to map set of emails you need to write a set tag okay set name of, what is the name of the set emails sorry emails okay corresponding to set i said it should have a collection table so I should give a table name let's say that it is as account underscore emails then I told that in this table there should be a foreign key coming from the account side remember to configure foreign key column we always use a key tag key and I'll give column a column name I'll say e underscore mail whatever I want sorry not e underscore mail the primary key of account should become foreign key here so I'll name it as a underscore num so now the meaning is whenever I'm using key tag the meaning is a underscore num will go into account underscore email table referencing to the primary key of the above one a underscore num, num references account number that's the meaning remember we'll be using key tag many times in this course you should understand the meaning of key tag key tag is always used to configure a foreign key column pointing or referencing to the primary key column of the above class then inside this set class we have set this is set of what set of strings is it string is an element set of string string is an element it's not a it's not an entity type we call uh, a value types also as elements so I have to use element 
and for this I have to specify the column. I'll give e underscore mail. And what is its type? Is it string or interlong? It is string. So remember this string is not java.lang.string, it is hibernate type. It is not var current database or it is not java.lang.string in Java. It is hibernate type. Hibernate has its own types which maps the java type in java type in our code as well as column type in database so this is how i mapped set of emails okay now uh, let me try to save it um, i have saved demo.java what i'm doing i'm creating account object I am creating set of emails. I have three emails right now. First, let me comment the set of addresses as of now. Okay. Now I am saying account or set emails. I am setting a reference and then saving account. Let us run. If you see one account object is inserted into account table and three emails are inserted into emails table. Let me show you the database. Account table, oh, oh better I will drop this database because account table was existing already. Um, better let me run it again. One account is inserted and uh, three emails are inserted. Let me refresh now. One account, account number is one, and emails is having a num. And let me show you the table structure. Here, if you see a num is a foreign key referencing account dot account number. So by using key tag, we have configured a foreign key column. Is it? Okay, so now the emails are inserted in the database. So we understood how to configure a set and also how to insert. Now let us see how to uh, get an account by primary key and what happens when I get. Um, I have here a lazy demo.java file. What I will do here is see, I am opening a session, beginning a transaction, and then uh, I'll just uncomment these lines. What these lines are doing? It's trying to get an account with primary key one, and then I'm calling. Get uh, let let me just run this session dot get an account with primary key one, and let's observe how many queries will be fired. See the query is fired only on account table a query is not fired on emails table is it so account is having a variable emails what will this emails be initialized with remember collections are loaded lazily in hibernate lazily means what on demand whenever we try to access them then only they will be loaded by default collections are loaded lazily that is the reason when i retrieved account only query on account table is fired but query on emails table is not fired so by default collections are loaded lazily okay now if i say account dot get emails it is returning me a set do you think query on emails table will be fired right now let us check Till I can see only query on account table, emails table is not queried because in this case when I am calling getter method, the getter method is just returning the reference and I am storing that reference of set inside another variable. I am not calling any methods on the set. Okay, So if I say system.out.println emails, it will internally call emails.toString, is it? Now I am trying to call a method on 
the set let us see what will happen the set should be initialized on demand yep i see the query on emails table now and um, i'm seeing all the emails printed so the concept you need to understand here is by default all the collections are loaded lazily and the set variable will be initialized with a proxy what do i mean by proxy when i mean by proxy there are two types of proxies static proxy and a dynamic proxy actually in hibernate for the interface java.util.set there is an implementation in hibernate called as persistent set persistent set is an implementation of set interface we call this as a static proxy because until i call methods on the set the set will not be initialized it just acts like a proxy to the emails in this case but when it will be initialized on demand whenever i call a method so let me show you by debugging i'll keep a breakpoint here I double click here and I kept a breakpoint. Let me start in debug mode. Mm, let me go. Yep. Now, if you see these variables, emails is a what type? Persistent set. Okay. Observe the console. Is a query fired on emails? No. Now what I'll do is I'll just select this. That means I'm trying to access. If you see emails is initialized right now. So whenever you try to access that set, then only it will be populated. It will fire a query and it will be populated automatically. So by default, collections are proxied in Hibernate. Not only collections, any association will be proxied. Here in this case for set, this set is initialized with persistent set which acts like a proxy. Okay. Now, I do not want uh, this lazy loading. By default, it is lazy loading. I want eager loading. So, what should I do? That means once I say session.get, even though I do not try to access emails, I want all the emails to be loaded eagerly just by calling session.get. So, if I want eager loading, what I can do is in the set tag, I can go and specify lazy equals to the default value is true, I will say false. Now, let us see. I am not trying to fetch emails, I am just trying to fetch account, but the emails should be loaded eagerly. Let us see. Yep, see, a query is fired on account table as well as a query is fired on emails table so emails are loaded eagerly by just saying lazy equals to false okay well, now again i'll switch it to lazy equals to true so by default if i try to access now will there be a query on emails all right lazy equals to true. i'll try to access will this result in a query no, I am just calling the getter method. Getter method is returning the reference. I am storing it in a separate variable. I am not calling methods on the set. So, it will not be initialized. But now, I will call emails.size. I just wanted to know what is the size of the set. How many emails does it have? Let me run. Will the all emails be loaded? Yep. See, a select query is fired to retrieve all the emails for this particular account number. So, even though I am not interested in iterating over the whole set, the whole set is populated. So, in this case, I do not want the whole set to be populated. I am just interested in size. I would be happy if a query will be fired to retrieve only the total count of emails. I do not do now what I want is I want this emails the set to be extra lazy 
by default it is lazy but I want it to be extra lazy so I will configure lazy equals to extra let me check what will happen if I say lazy equals to extra if you see whenever I try to call emails dot size a separate query which will get the count of emails is fired it is not loading all the emails it is just firing a separate query to find a count okay another thing I'll show now I don't want size also I want to check if emails dot contains I want to check whether there is an email called as a at uh, what are the emails in database a at weightlearnonline.com is there, right I want to check whether in the emails is there email the a at way to learn online.com present so let us check I'm just checking whether it contains or not if you see the query the query is fired where select one from account emails where account number is this and email is this if this query returns more than one rows then what the email is existing so this method will return true otherwise false now since I configured lazy equals to extra what is the set doing it is firing appropriate queries to fetch only the details which are required so that is the use of lazy equals to extra so now we have seen three options lazy equals to false lazy equals to extra lazy equals to true but let me go ahead I will say lazy equals to false how many queries are fired right now if I try to retrieve this one let me just try to print emails how many queries are fired right now if I am just trying to retrieve only account I said lazy equals to false that means I want them to be eagerly loaded how many queries do you expect one or two let us check oh two queries are fired why I assume it will be good if account table is joined with emails table and if single query is fired that will be good at performance is it so if you want a single query to be fired what you can do is instead of using lazy equals to false there is one more option fetch equal to join that means you are saying whenever account is getting retrieved use a join and join account table with account emails table whenever you are saying fetch equals to join you are again doing eager loading only but now a single query will be fired which will fetch all the accounts and emails sorry the account and all its emails let me check oh sorry I ran this so demo let me run this lazy demo I am trying to get only account I am not even printing the emails let me run it how many queries are fired one single query which is joining account table with emails using left to join that means it will get all the accounts even though there are no emails right so hope now you understood what is the meaning of fetch equals to join hey remember in this case we are using set of value types and we are discussing about the options lazy equals to true false extra and fetch equals to join the same options will be valid for even collection of entity types or whatever collection it is the same options are valid so i'll not be repeating all these concepts again for other sets uh, listen here carefully same concepts will be applied everywhere whenever you see any collection okay now let me remove this fetch equal to join let me tell you about few more things on queries mm. Okay, see here um, what I want to do is I want to fire a HQL query uh, which will retrieve all the accounts so I will say session dot create query 
What is the query? I want all the accounts. I will say from account. That is all. This will give a list of all accounts. Now, how many accounts are there before I run this? Uh, let me check in database how many accounts are there. There are only two accounts. Um, let me run this save demo 10 times, 8 more times. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 12, 13, 14, 15. Almost I ran this 15 times. Let us see. I should finally see a lot of accounts. Almost how many accounts? Um, somewhere around 16 accounts I have. Okay. Now, uh, let me go to the HQL query. Once I say from account, this query should fetch all the accounts and I should be able to iterate over them. Uh, for now, I will just comment out this part. I don't want to print emails. Let me check how many queries will be fired. See how many queries are fired? One query which is retrieving the whole account details and it's printing all the account IDs and names. That's fine. Now what will happen um, if I try to get account dot get emails and I'll take it in a set of string emails is a test and then I'll try to print emails so what how many queries do you think will be fired there are 16 accounts whenever we are iterating over each account each account has a proxy emails so you are calling methods on the proxy in a loop that means you are trying to Call methods on 16 proxies. Whenever a proxy method is called, it will try to initialize itself. So let me check how many queries will be fired right now. Oh, lot of queries. See, first query is fired on account table just for my HQL query. And whenever I try to retrieve first proxy, emails take query on emails is fired. Second proxy, third proxy. So 16 times the query is fired. So total number of queries here will be if there are 16 accounts in database, total number of queries will be how many? One query to retrieve all accounts. That means I will be having 16 accounts in the list. That means 16 proxies. So I am looping for 16 times and initializing 16 proxies 16 times. So 16 queries. So, 16 plus 1, 17 queries are fired. This problem is called as n plus 1 select queries. So, if the first query results in n rows, the total number of queries fired will be n plus 1. n plus 1 queries are fired. So, how to fix this issue? One way is we can specify in this batch size. I will say batch size of 5. That means whenever we are trying to retrieve first proxy, a single query will be issued to retrieve 5 proxies. And again, whenever I try to retrieve 6th proxy, one more query will be issued to database which will retrieve 6 to 10 proxies. So, in this case, there are 16 records. How many queries do you expect? One query for retrieving all accounts, then one. And whenever I try to retrieve first proxy, one query, so uh, five proxies are retrieved. Then whenever I try to access sixth proxy, one more query, eleventh proxy, one more query, sixteenth one, one more query. So I should see five queries right now. Let me check. Huh. Let me check here one query the first query is retrieving five emails second uh, whenever i try to retrieve uh, 
the sixth email again retrieving this one and then this one again this one. So, four times the queries are fired on emails table. So, five queries I saw, is it? So, I have reduced the number of queries to instead of n plus 1 queries, we are now having n by batch size, batch size is 5 plus 1. So, in this case n is what 16 by 5 plus 1. So, how many? 16 by 5, we have to take it as a round figure, it is 4 plus 1. 5 queries are fired. If it is uh, 16 by 5 is 3 point something, 3 point something should be considered as 4, 4 plus 1, 5 queries. So, by using batch size, we can reduce the number of queries fired, but really at, at run time, how do you know? in how many batches you want to retrieve. Suppose if you are writing a web application where you are showing some 10 records in a page, then you can set the batch size as 10, that should be fine. But um, if I want to retrieve all the emails at a single shot, how to retrieve it? What I can do is very simply. If I want to retrieve all the emails, when I try to email the, whenever I try to access first email, what I can do is I can say fetch is equal to subselect. Let us see what will happen when I say fetch equal to subselect, how many queries will be fired? Let me explain you. So, here again I am doing the same, I am retrieving all accounts. So, 16 proxies will be there. Whenever I try to retrieve the first email in the loop, let us see what will happen. Now, see here, this is the first query which is retrieving all the accounts, and one query is fired on emails table where it is retrieving all the emails. It is using inner query, subselect query. This subselect query is nothing but the above query which contains only selecting of the primary key, these are not there. So, this inner query will retrieve all the accounts and this total query will retrieve all the emails of all accounts. So, you will see a difference if I modify a query. Let us say I want to fire select star from account A where a dot, um, a dot, let me check in database a dot account name is it okay a dot name is equals to i will keep it in single code i'll hard code right now shiva let me run you will find the difference okay see the above query the first query is what it is selecting all the accounts where the account name is Shiva and the same above query is used as inner query even the where clause is there. But only difference is this inner query select is selecting only the primary key. So, the second select query will retrieve all the emails of the accounts selected by the first query. So, it is using a sub select query. So, how many queries are fired? Exactly two. Is that? Yeah. So, If you are using fetch is equal to subselect, this is how it works. You are going to fire only two queries. Okay. Now, um, let me show you how to fetch eagerly in a single query itself. Uh, let me just show you one more example. Um, uh, 
Um, I am using uh, this one. Now, I don't want even a second query to be fired. If I use fetch is equals to subselect, one separate query is fired on emails and it is selecting all emails. I don't want a separate query. I want a single query to retrieve all the emails eagerly. So what I will do is from account A join what A dot emails A dot emails. Let me show you emails is a set is it emails is a set and uh, set for set is there a collection table yes for set there is a collection table is it this table account and score emails is nothing but table for set. So, a dot emails whenever we are joining with a dot emails we are just saying that join account table with the collection table ok. So, let me check how many queries will be fired right now. I still have in my hbm.xml I still have fetch equals to subselect. Let me run. Will this join the account table with emails table? Let me check. Okay, see here. The first query is joining account table with emails. But again, if you see the select is not selecting emails, even though it is joining the select query is not selecting emails in the select clause there is no emails. So, this query will retrieve only the accounts which are having emails see it is not left inner join it is inner join. So, this query will retrieve only the accounts which have email IDs if there are some accounts without email IDs they will not be retrieved is it. So, let me check I will go to emails table and I will um, select all oh, lot of emails are there. Let me select all. Okay, anyway, I will select. Uh, I have deleted it. So, again I will select delete. So, right now I have emails only for account number 15 and 16. Now, again let me run. How many accounts do I get for the first query? Let us check. See, oh, um, for email 9, 10, 11, 15, 16. Oh, I think 9, 10, 11 also are there. Refresh. Oh, where are they? Oh, no. 9, 10, 11 also are there. 8, 9, 10, 11 also are there. Okay, so I am getting the emails. I am having emails for 8, 9, 10, 11, 15, 16. So, 8, 9, 10, 11, 15, 16. So, the first query has retrieved only the accounts belonging, only the accounts which are having email IDs, but that is not what I want. I want all the accounts to be retrieved whether they have emails or not. So, what I can do is I will go to code. I will specify left join that means it will show left inner join. So, it will retrieve all the accounts whether they are they are having emails or not let me check. If you see now for the accounts 1 to 7 the emails are empty even though there are no emails the account objects are retrieved. So, now you understood how to actually use a left join 
but still I have a problem. How many quails are fired? Oh, separate queries again get fired to retrieve all the emails. I don't want second query to be fired. In the first query itself, I want to actually retrieve all the emails for the accounts. So, if I want all the collections to be fetched eagerly, what I can do is whenever I am joining, I will say join fetch. Let us see now how many queries will be fired. See how many queries? Yeah, single query. Now, if you see the select, emails are also selected in the single query and it is using a left outer join. So, if you are using join fetch, that means you want to eagerly load the association. If you are just using join, it will just join, it will not fetch. If I am just using join, see the select query now, the select of account. See, the select is having only the columns of account, it is not fetching the email columns. So, if I want emails also to be loaded eagerly, I would say join fetch. So, hope you understood about what is join fetch and also how hope you understood about how to do a left join as well. Okay, let me even complicate it. Um, in account, I have field called as addresses. I want to map this earlier, I didn't map it. How to map addresses? So, addresses also is a set. I will write set of set name is what? Name of the variable addresses and class sorry, and table. Table I want it as say account underscore address. For every collection, there should be a separate collection table. And then in this account table, in this address table, I want foreign key. So again, key tag, column, I'll say a cc underscore num. Then earlier it was set of simple type string, but now set of complex type address. Address is having again city and country. So, whenever you have a set of composite types, you should not use element, you should use composite element where I can give classes address, then again I will write property name is equal city and name is equal to country. Okay, now let me drop this database for clarity and I will recreate the database. Okay, now I will go to save demo. Mm, I have already the code for some set of addresses. I am having three addresses in the set and for account I am setting addresses and I am saving account. So, if I save one account, how many inserts will be fired? One insert to insert account into account table, three inserts to insert three emails, three inserts to insert three addresses. So, I should see seven insert queries. Let me run. Yep, as expected. One to insert into account and three queries into emails and three queries into address. Let me show you the database. One account, three addresses and three emails. Z. Now, um, let me run this save demo some, some 10 times so that I will get some data populated in the database. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, totally I have executed ten times. Let me check in my database how many accounts will be there. 
So 10 accounts are there. For each account there are 3 addresses and 3 emails. Now what I want to do is whenever I am fetching account, I want to fetch addresses also eagerly. So what I can again say left to join a dot what? What is the field? Addresses. So single query will be fired joining emails table, addresses table and account table. Let us see. Mm. So if you see here a simple table to fire join all this is that but yeah for each account it is iterating over multiple times and printing it that is ok. If you feel that you are getting duplicate accounts maybe while joining you can also say select distinct a now let us check it will fire a query to display only distinct accounts yep distinct and now yep one account and uh, it's having three emails it's printed yes so that's how to specify distinct earlier what I was getting for account number one I was getting six rows right so that's how you can select a distinct rows as well now you understood how to use join fetch okay now let us try to understand a few more things um, I want to join um, account with address table account with address in account address I have city I want to select few columns of address I want to print a list of all the names and cities so how to write a query so session dot create a query what I want to select first of all let me write from account A I want to select columns of uh, address as well so let me join and say left to join a dot what is the property name for address addresses I'll say ad so this will join so I've given an alias for the collection table a dot addresses refers to the collection table and I have given an alias now what I want I want the name so select a dot name comma a dot ad dot city let me check it will print I will be getting a list of object array whenever I am selecting project in the columns I will get list of object array first element of the array will be name and second element will be city so let me check whether I will get or not first of all I will say distinct ok so I should get distinct Shiva and city Delhi Bangalore Hyderabad if I don't say distinct a lot of accounts is that so it will get all So this is how you can write a projected queries whenever you want to select a column from a collection you have to first of all join using the association path using the association path and then given alias then using the alias you can select do not do like this uh, normally if you are an SQL developer you might try to do like this select from account a comma address ad 
where a dot mm, do you have an account a dot account number is equals to ad dot account number don't do like that should not use this type of joins whenever you are joining you have to use join keyword and do like this from account a and use join keyword and then a dot the association path association path is addresses that's how you have to join be very careful don't use theta style joins don't theta style join means what something like select from account a comma address ad that's a theta style join don't join like this it always join by using association paths okay so now you understood how to fire queries by selecting properties from a collection that's all about how to map now you understood till now how to map collection of value types using set in xml how to do the same thing using annotations let me show you so here is the account class how to annotate it you have to use an annotation this is a element collection of elements is it you have to use element collection to tell that this is a collection of simple types and then you have to specify a uh, annotation called as collection table and give the name of collection table name is a cause i'll say mm, acc underscore emails then you have to specify join columns join column is nothing but we use for specifying foreign key columns so if i give comma and press control space join columns is a for type it's of array of join column array means you should give like this array of what join column join column is annotation join column and what should be the name primary key of this one should go here so i'll give a c c underscore num and uh, what's the column for this emails collection column um, e underscore no. column name is a person name is a question that's how you can configure collection of elements similarly you have to use um, element collection and similar to the above one i will use a collection table but i'll give a different name acc underscore address and um, some foreign key name a underscore mom and i will use embedded address is an embeddable so i'll go there and i'll write embeddable so column names will be what city and country and if you want to override when you are you are embedding you already know how to use attribute overrides attribute overrides it's an array so let us give an array of what attributes override name is equals to what for city i'll give column is equals to column name is equals to i'll say acc underscore city account city so right now i want to override who will city let it be like that i could override country as well but right now i'm not overriding so this is the mapping and um, let me check i'll drop the database
and I'll create it again HDB. Um, now let me uh, run this save demo. Save demo as we saw earlier, we are creating an account, adding three emails into set, adding three addresses, setting them and saving account. So they should be added accordingly. So let me run. Yep. So as expected, let me show you the database tables. This account table, how many accounts? One account is added and the emails three emails and addresses so the column name is acc underscore city because i have overridden it but for country i need to override it it is country is it so now you know how to map collection of value types using set in jpa annotations but then by default all the collections are lazy so if you want to configure eager what you can do is you can say fetch is equals to eager Sorry. fetch is equals to eager by default the collections are fetched lazily this is a way you can specify fetch equals to eager but how about lazy lazy loading sorry how about uh, extra lazy extra lazy is not supported by jp annotation it is a hibernate specific feature so if you want extra lazy then remove this and you just have to configure using um, another annotation of for hibernate specific to hibernate lazy collection here you can specify extra or false or true this way you can specify extra lazy is that that's fine then you saw the options of batch size in XML. How to specify the batch size? It's just like specifying here the annotation batch size size equals to 5. This is equivalent to configuring batch size in your XML. And then how to configure fetch is equal to subselect, something similar to fetch is equal to subselect. You can use fetch and then here you can specify fetch is equal to subselect right fetch is hibernate specific annotation subselect strategy is given only by hibernate it is not supported by jpa that's why i'm using hibernate specific <coughs> annotation so these are all the various configurations similar to the one in xml configuration using annotations so in, in xml we have seen that says here the annotation is batch size. In XML, we have seen fetch is equal to subselect. The annotation is fetch is equal to subselect. In, in XML, we have seen um, fetch is equal to eager. Here you can configure in the element itself, you can configure it. Here in element, you can configure fetch is a fetch type is equal to eager. So, whatever options are there in XML, similar options are available in JPA. Is that? Okay, so I told you briefly about how to configure the same XML things using annotations, but you will get more confidence if you open the lab documentation. Here, detailed documentation is given step by step. Follow this documentation step by step and perform each and everything, you will get a lot of confidence, right? So, uh, we understood how to map collection of value types using set using both XML and JPA configuration till now. So, if you want to configure using list, how to do it? Very simple. So, now see the change. One account is having list of emails. Earlier we had set. Now we are having list. So, when do we use list? If, uh, if you want the order of emails to be maintained in database, the order in which you add to this list should be the same as the order in which they should be stored in database and they should be retrieved in same order. If order of retrieving is important for you in your application, 
then instead of using set you can use list so if i'm using list what are all the changes i need to make very simple i have to use list tag instead of set tag and i have to add an extra column called as list index this is the column which contains the indexes values right similarly whenever i am configuring a list of addresses address is not a simple element it's a composite element so i'm using list and inside this composite element and also here i'm specifying list index so only extra thing is you have to just configure list index column let me see i will drop my database again and then recreate it um hdb so um i have a save demo let me save it so insert should be done going to database one account is inserted and three emails see the indexes are maintained the indexes of the list in memory 0 12 are maintained in a separate column list index column and similarly for address table list indexes are maintained so the advantage is whenever you are saving the list index are also saved into database and whenever you are retrieving the order will be preserved so if you want order to be preserved then only go for list otherwise go for set all the other configurations which i discussed like lazy loading eager loading fetch equal to join and also batch size fetch equal to sub select all the concepts are same even for list so i am not repeating it again here okay now you understood the xml configuration similarly if you want to see the jpa configuration it's also easy only thing is it's almost similar to the one you have done for set only thing is you have to configure an extra index column that's all the variable type should be list and you have to configure an extra index column that's all nothing much different all the other concepts of uh, fetch equal to lazy eager uh, batch size fetch equal to sub select all are same right so you now know how to configure using annotations as well as xml now we are done with this video presentation you just have to open this documentation this documentation is very nice i have done step by step i have given you steps what you have to do if you go through this documentation and execute your code your confidence will double let me tell you this this lab you have to execute because the same concept of eager fetching loading firing queries will be useful for next demos as well next applications as well so don't miss this lab please go ahead and do this lab exercise by following the instructions see you in next video in next video i'll show you how to map collection of entity types